my people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic damn day. Welcome back to the channel. Obviously, the start of season three, and we are in the freaking Premier League. Now, I have gone ahead, I've made a few signings. I'll go through that very, very shortly. But for the meantime, I just want to go through the team here and show you guys that obviously I have changed the formation. It's not the, the 4 triple 2 system. We have gone with a 4 1 4 1. And it does change. I have gone through some tactics and stuff. You know, I've revitalized the, the system. And as you will see as well, Lloyd Kelly as a left back. I was so damn excited the way he played in those last three games of last season that I was like, you know what? Got to go with him as that left back. And I think he will provide a really good bit of defensive outlets in that wider left-hand side. So, Anyway, let's go through the signings. Okay, so obviously coming into the season, we let go of quite a few players and it made me think, okay, we need to bring in good quality. We need to bring in players with low overalls that can grow into those high potentials and maybe we sell them in the future or potentially they grow with the squad. So we started off with signing a fantastic player in Jan Kuto. Now this was a player that I'm so excited to use. I haven't used him yet in a career mode. So this is the first time me doing so. I also decided, obviously, with Kelly shifting to that left-hand position, Jared Branthwaite, he was actually in Spain playing for, I think it was either Caides or Las Palmas, and I decided to bring him back to England. Then we went on and signed the likes of Brandon Williams, Venetia Sosa from Sheffield United, who were not promoted last season, so it was a very easy decision for me to make. And then one other signing that I decided to make, which I'm very excited about as well, is Matt O'Reilly. I want to see what he can do in our midfield going forward, but nonetheless, very excited. And then we signed two free agents in Marley Ake, as well as Harry Tafudo to cover for that left back role. And then obviously Marley Ake, I am fairly excited about. I think he can do a very good job for us um, as that fifth choice winger. Now, also, you'll see right here, Jaffet Tanganga. Currently looking to loan him in. We don't have that much money to begin with. Um, or end with after all those signings so we're lo looking to loan him in with an option to buy yes and i'm thinking he can play as a right back yes sense back yes right wing back but i'm also thinking he's got the stats to potentially be a really good backup dm and with our tactics this season we need a dm that can slot into that back four slash back three in certain moments so yes guys as you can see right here we don't have that much money left. We've got around 9 million. I'm not too perturbed to try and spend that. Save it for January. Maybe we can do something really unique. I'm not, you know, I'm not too fussed with it. Um, but nonetheless, 9 million, I think that's a decent amount of money. Obviously, with any loan players, potentially, as well, that comes into play. We started off with around 65 million. And then, obviously, with sales and whatnot, it went up to around, I think it may have been... 80 million or so so we have spent the budget really really well to say the very least so yeah I, I, well as you can see there on the on the left hand side or just above me um i'll move myself over but we started off with 65 million we, we gained around 37 million from sales so it's more or less around 100 million that we had so that's not a bad starting budget to start off season three in our premier league birth you could say but yes let me show you guys the first three games of our premier league season okay so our first three games in the prem are tottenham away leeds united at home then we have a, an away game against i don't know who that is my bad but anyway we've got it we've got a league cup game and then we've got arsenal away so we have back to back essentially first two away games north london oh my goodness and we know that ea loves spurs so this is going to be a very tough test to say the very least okay so obviously just going through the squad we've still got our three normal goalkeepers of course tofudo coming in the likes of brandon williams coming in he can slot in as either a left or right back we are converting him back into a right back as his main position and then, of course, you've got the likes of Lloyd Kelly, Capri, Dan Ballard. Like, our centre-backs, they're not the highest overalls. Capri, Ballard, Branthwaite. Yeah, not the highest of overalls. But nonetheless, I'm still showing some faith. And maybe next season we look into, you know, upgrading significantly in that area. Um, but yes, also, the likes of Riedewald will be converted into a centre-back. I was lacking left-footed centre-backs. And I think, obviously, he is left-footed physical strong can definitely play there obviously not yet ready to make that position change but he is in the the training process of doing so 
Of course, Cullen Malumbi, I'm conversing him into central midfielders, obviously with the change of formation, it is required. But Fauna and Sosa, as well as Jaffa Tanganga, they'll all be the, the out and out DMs of the side. Of course, we've kept Carlin Grant, Haksabanovic, Mali now comes into the side. Um, of course, Matt O'Reilly. I've also loaned out, I forgot to say this, but Jack Potts loaned out to Bournemouth. They didn't get promoted last season with us. So obviously uh, the likes of Leeds United won the, the playoff race. Um, so we loaned him out. It's, it's probably going to just be for a season, depending on how well he does there, and then we'll bring him back. But I think from next season, or maybe even the season after that, he'll definitely be ready to come into the side, shine, and, you know, just be the best jackpots that he can be. Um, obviously, we've got Jed Wallace, um, Kuto, uh, very, very good players nonetheless. And then, of course, we've got our two strikers up front. I'm not really too perturbed about bringing in anyone else um, as things stand right now, but that might change. We don't know just yet. Okay, and then, obviously, one last thing before we hop into our first game of the Premier League season. Um, our manager rating back up to 70. We did do a few good things here and there and every other way. Um, but we need to, you know, obviously try and match these things. And off the bat, brand exposure wise, we're not signing a crucial forward to the, the forward position. So it's a bit frustrating that they're dictating that we have to do this when it's not going to fit the mold of the team. We've got Sanko, we've got Madja, and we don't play with any other forwards. So it's, it's very like, oh, like, why are you getting involved in the team board? Like, I, I just feel like they want me out. Um, and then obviously we need to finish, we, we've just been promoted, but we need to finish mid-table and make the round of 16s um, stage in the, in the FA Cup. So obviously last season that nearly lost me my job, so we will take the FA Cup way more serious this time around. Uh, nothing about the League Cup though, which is good, but this is one area that has saved my ass and brought up the, the board's confidence in me. Um, keep player salary growth under 15%, we've done that, 100%. And then obviously we've sold a few Youth Academy players as well, um, which has brought you know, the, the, the stress and the pressure that the board are applying on me down ever so slightly. But obviously, I do think if we don't complete these things, these two youth developments and brand exposure objectives, we'll have a lot more pressure on us going forward. Press conference time, our first press conference in the Premier League. Okay, so we've made some good improvements, but they don't always happen overnight. Okay, this and the other. Um, well, yeah, we want to make sure that one, we haven't overspent in the transfer market. We haven't given crazy lucrative deals to our players but two we want to make sure that we're, we're safe we want to try you know beat the teams in and around us i don't think top four or championship level is, is what we're going to do this season but it's it's a process it's a project we're building and i am very excited to use venetia sosa I, wa I wanted to get him last season already but obviously we weren't promoted they were obviously relegated so it didn't make sense but now the time is right our new number three, DM, can drop into the back line. It's going to suit our system and our, our way of, of play. I'm very excited to see how the, these tactics work out. Um, and yes, I believe in our players. Going into a massive game against Tottenham Hotspur. Fantastic. Okay, so just having a look at the match report before we get going. They're starting Larice in goal. And Dyer. wow. Um, they also signed one of our summer targets in uh, Kikoresh, which is also why... I decided not to just go and sign anybody. I want to kick your issue. We didn't get him. So we've shifted Lloyd Kelly into that left back role. But also, Dyer and Lloris in the back line and the defense, not good enough for me. Uh, they can be got at. Hoiberg captains the side over Son. Interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm not really blown away. Obviously, that front line is really good, really pacey. They also have Inneseri off the bench. Lucas Hernandez, Madison, Polina, all on the bench. Of course, Van de Ven. Are they not taking us seriously? Because they're going to have a, a very rude awakening if they, if they, you know, aren't taking us that serious. Um, tactical vision is set to wing play, which makes sense. Pedro Porro being the key defensive player I need to look out for. Okay. Okay, and just to show you guys our lineup I've gone with, Magic does start over Sanko and Malumbi does start over the likes of Matt O'Reilly. Obviously, first game in and whatnot. But otherwise, pretty much full strength 11. Our center backs are not fully fit, but I have a, a lot of faith in them that they will be able to manage. But yes, let's hop on straight into the game. Lloyd Kelly gets blown by Kulusevski. Kulusevski trying to take him on, muscles him out the way. Baseline, and they've hit the post. Oh my. Uh, I don't want to be a damn Bernie, I'm not going to lie. We played good football in the championship last year. We're, we're technically undefeated for like a whole season in, in domestic form. Good block there. Big Daniel Ballard. 
But yes, I don't want to be a Burnley that comes up and like wins one game in their first damn near like 20. Haksabanovic this time puts it in the back of the net. 10 minutes in, 1 0 up. They hit the post. We counter attacks. Scored. It's it's a bad backline that Spurs have in play at the moment. Connor Bradley this time. Josh Madger, back post. I see you, Madger. Oh my god, he's missed the header. And to be fair, Larice just stood still. Oh no, they've blown past the first man. Dan Ballard gets beaten in the air, but never fear, because freaking Lloyd Kelly is here and they've got it straight back. They're coming straight back at us. Big block this time. Is that a foul? Have they called it for a foul? No, they haven't. It's a, it's a, it's a corner kick. I don't know, because like at the end, the way last season ended with those weird fouls that they were calling in the box and everything, like, it, it just didn't make sense. So you, you never know. In the Premier League, obviously, the officiating is slightly high and it's another fantastic save from Woodman. I told I told you guys, Woodman is so ready to make his Premier League debut. It's unbelievable. Didn't get the opportunity with Newcastle. Didn't get the opportunity um, for a while, actually. And then he got, you know, sold and binned off, essentially. But we are giving him a really good opportunity here. Uh, Venetia Sosa. Well, we're going straight to Madja. Madja's got some time on his hands and well closed down there from Spurs. They've learned. That's what you want to see from them. Wow, they went very far back there. Tap sober this time into the back line. Yeah, we're playing a lot off the ball at this moment in time, but it's okay. It's all right. And just get get body in the... That, what? What? Bro, Dan Ballard, must, he must be really bad at tackling because I literally time it when the ball is there. Oh my God. And also Rashadison flew. Like, that's pretty damn realistic if you ask me. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully, hope... Oh, we went the wrong way. And, um... To be honest, he's one of the best uh, penalty kick takers in the game, uh, Danny Pereo. So, nonetheless, fair, fair play. 1-1. One, one. I'll take a 1-1. One, one. You, like, you don't understand, guys. I will 1,006% take a 1-1 one, one draw. Lloyd Kelly this time is taking up a, a more narrow approach. What? Tackle him nicely. Not. Whoa, 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 whoa. There is no need for that whatsoever, Richardson. Actually, you know what? It is a good time. To bring on some fresh legs. Also, you guys will notice I have gone a bit Brazilian with Kuto and Sosa coming into the side. Um, I, I do like that approach. I do like that approach indeed. Branthwaite has been absolutely phenomenal, but he's going to come off for the likes of Brandon Williams, who is going to play as that left back player. Ballard and Kelly both looking very tired. But what else can we do? Yeah, make sure that they don't score, boys, please. That would be nice. I know Kuto does and has played as a... As a Right back slash right wing back. Very good with the defending. He's got a bit more defensive acumen to him. Well, we've gone long here. Kuto's making a fantastic run. Oh my god. He's beaten his man. He's whipped it in. Josh Matt just put it on goal. Make sure, please, boys, hang on here. Ref, that's, that's... Referee, that's time. Okay, don't blow the whistle. Oh, okay. Well, it's fine. 1-1. One, one. First game of the Premier League season. I think we're going to struggle against Arsenal. Of course, it is away. This was a, an away game as well. So, very happy with the points off the bat. We've gotten off the mark. We scored the first goal of our season. I can't ask for much more, apart from a win, obviously. Here we go. We've signed Jaffet Tanganga on loan from Spurs. Funny enough, I will be obviously changing his um, development plan as well. I think that is quite important. He needs to be able to play as that DM, so he needs to have that position, obviously. But I, I do like him. I've always liked him, especially as a signing in, in FIFA and obviously now in EAFC. Um, so I, I think he can add a nice layer to the side. Number 15 as well. Interesting, taking off um, trainer's kit number. I don't know, will he be back next season? We've already given away his number. Okay, first home game. It is against Leeds United. Now... Obviously, Leeds United promoted with us. And this could potentially be seen, especially in the latter stages of the season, as a, a relegation six-pointer. Now, we need to make sure that we can amount the points on the board. Back post whip into Sanko. I see you. Oh, my God. It's a fantastic save. Melier stretching, getting a boot on it. Sanko almost opening up the scoring. Woba was beaten. All ends up. Wow. Okay, we've got a corner kick from it. Early signs are leading to good, positive things. Come on. Wallace puts it in a good area. Oh, oh, he's recovered that. Well done, Cullen. Back into Wallace. Wallace whips it in. 
That was a good whip. Please win it, Lloyd Kelly. That's why I also like Lloyd Kelly being on the field as a left back. Oh my days. And we forced Melier into another fantastic save. Six minutes in. Two or three really good opportunities. And Wallace puts in a bit more power this time. Onto Branthwaite's head. And a save yet again. Oh my god. It's over the bar. Is it a corner kick again? Seven minutes in. This time from the opposite side. We are piling on the pressure. You can see one team's up for it. The other team, their goalkeeper is. But the, the rest of them, definitely not. Branthwaite's. Looking to be a fantastic aerial threat with his massive six foot five frame. We've always had troubles with pace. But they've got troubles with, oh my god, physicality. Great. <laughs> oh my days. They all also almost opened up the scoring. We're going straight here into the likes of Jed Wallace. Held, held it off beautifully. Come on. Oh my days. Both sides almost, almost, I say, opening up the scoring. This time into Matt O'Reilly. He's a strong runner with the ball, but just not, not there. Haksibanovic lays it off into Cullen this time. Oh my God, he's missed the whole goal. Is Cullen having one of those moments where he just misses everything and then all of a sudden he erupts and goes into like this crazy goal scoring form. And as you can see right here, well, we, we cleared it off the line. It was our own doing essentially, but uh, nonetheless, cleared off the line. And I'll, I'll say this, Branthwaite, first two games of the season, looking very good. Takes a shot on, Sanko's got it. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, into Lloyd Kelly this time. Just calm composure, calm and composed. Cullen! There we go. Like I said, is he going to go through that phase where he misses everything? Well, he missed that, that good sitter and he scored a Travella with the very next shot. Come on. I see Jed Wallace, he's made that run into the space. Not tracked by his man, and he's opened the scoring for his account for the season. 2-0 up in 30 minutes. It probably could be 2-1, but we've had so many chances in this game. It's unfreaking believable. Flipping Trent Alexander-Arnold. Our right back is Reese James, a man that can attack and defend, and Haksabanovic making that run. Where's the support? Ref, that's a foul. That is a horrific foul, actually. I hope he's not injured. It doesn't look like it, obviously with the animations and everything. And um, to be fair, I think that's a bit harsh. I think that is a bit harsh. Just a, a simple foul call would have been acceptable. They're both running for the ball. It's a 50-50. He comes off a little bit worse. Uh, I, yeah, it, it's, it, I think it's a bit harsh. Anyways, we move. This time, Jed Wallace to put in a very good area here. I've gone with a bit more power into the central area. And Haksabanovic, one of the shortest men on the field, gets on the end of it. Sanko across the face of goal into Matt Riley, who opens up his scoring account for the baggies. Sanko doing the unselfish thing across the face of goal. And our essential attacking midfielder gets on the score sheet. Come on, let's go. Like, that is some absolute fantastic player. I actually thought that maybe Sanko might be offside here. Knows that the opportunity really isn't there for him, but he can see that there's another opportunity for one of his teammates. Come on, man. Off to fantastic starts. Every out there ball, everything. They are not looking great, mate. Oh my days. Matt O'Reilly this time. I think he is going to score a bunch of goals for us this season. Also in the Rashford boots as well. Hmm, looking like a striker, you know. 54 minutes gone. Sanko hasn't been the best, but you know what? He's getting there at least. He's got an assist. We are going to make a few other changes as well. Jaffa Tanganga coming on for Ballot. So we're playing him as that sense back for now. And then... Connor Brady's look really good. Uh, Branthwaite's look really good as well. You know what, Kelly, you can come out for a bit with uh, Brandon Williams coming in as that left back. You know what, it's quite funny. When I was deciding to buy him, I'm like, I'm not going to play him as a left back. I want him as the right back. And I'm playing him first two games of the season as that left back. Um, and then Malumbi, I can't, you know what, I actually can't. I can't bring on Malumbi just yet. Riedewald, you know, Riedewald can come on for Branthwaite. I think that's acceptable. Playing... Two players that aren't really seen as centre backs in the centre back department. Well done, Brom Squad. Good ball into Cullen. I love the fact that our number number eights, I should say, are making those advanced runs forward. It does help with the builder play. It was something that I was struggling with when last season. Obviously, we went undefeated and whatnot. But like when you're playing that four two three one, the we weren't really supported as much. But now we've got a corner. And Jed Wallace to take it. Puts it in a very good area. Magia. I expect Magia to actually be a bit better there. Tanganga this time into Wallace. Wallace puts it into a good area. And you know who's there? The hat trick freaking hero, Matt O'Reilly. Hat trick on debut oh, at the Hawthorns, I should say. Um, that is incredible, mate. That is absolutely incredible. What a diving header, you know. 
Good ball whips in. Oh my god, what a freaking ball. Yep, Ruta. Ruta always pops up with the late goals against us. It doesn't matter if they're 5-0 down or 1-0 down. He'll still pop up with a goal nonetheless. And he was a player I was looking at, to be honest. Um, I, I see him as potentially a right winger, not really a centre forward. But he was a player we were looking at. But obviously, because Leeds got promoted, it's very unrealistic that they would sell one of their best players to another promotion team as well. Yes. Oh, Matt O'Reilly's pretty terrible. I didn't realize that. I thought he, he might be like a decent set-piece specialist, but never fear that's horribly hit. And that should be the game. A hat-trick for Matt O'Reilly on debut at the Hawthorns. 5-1 against potential relegation rivals. Of course, we're only two games into the season. But so far, four points from a possible six in our first two Premier League games. Now, it's on to the EFL Cup. Okay, so for this game, we are going to make a number of variety changes. Likes of Haxa Banovic will come out. Grant's going to start his first game. Kuto is going to start his first game. Malumbi, even though it says he's a DM, he's actually not. Um, he's going to come out as well. Uh, we'll play Cullen, that's fine. I I've realized we, we don't have like a full, you know, full man squad that can just swap in and out whenever they can. Capri's also going to get his first start to the season with Connor Bradley dropping out for Tafulo. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? Um, even though Sanko asked to, he, uh, Sanko spoke to me, he's like, boss, I really want to start this on the other. I think he, he will start the next game against Arsenal. We need that pace up front, so I think he'll do a good job there. But Riedewald is going to take the captain's armband. I think not, mate. I think not. I think it will be the likes of Colin Grant. I've made my decision. Colin Grant will be the stand-in captain when the slot play, at least. This time, Kuto beats his man, chips it to the central area, and there we have it. Kuto with a great little bit of movement. Madja finding the space in the box. 1-0 up. Colin Grant celebrates like a madman. Kuto this time, low and hard, and he gets his first goal for the club. Let's freaking go, mate. Okay, so 60 minutes gone. We are going to make a few changes. Sanko is going to come on. Ake is also going to come on for Kuto. Um, but th that is going to be it, really. I, I don't want to do too much. I need Kuto, like, you know, fit and firing for the, the Arsenal game. But otherwise, no other changes really need to be made. Tanganga this time. Sanko. Oh, God. Tanganga this time again. Oh, my God. That is my backup DM. Sanko. Puts it low, puts it hard, but you know who's there? Frickin' Cullen. I think he might be offside. Nope, it's not. It's change, and that's 4-0. And you know what? We're going to simulate the rest of this one because it's basically all but done. Sim to the end. Let's go. And we run out 4-1 winners. That's not bad. I'll take that. On to Arsenal. Okay, so for the Arsenal game, they are looking very weird. I must say, Declan Rice on the bench, Jorginho, Thomas Partey, and Odegaard. In the midfield, there's no Martinelli. I don't know where he's gone, but Andy Robertson at left back with Alfonso Davies on the bench. They're starting Jimenez and Kivior in the back line instead of having at least, you know, any, you know, positional awareness with a left footer play on the right and so on. But anyway, none of my business. And Alexis Vega as the left wing instead of Trossard. No Kai Havertz though, he's on the bench. Away. At the Emirates, a very tough ground to come to these days. Of course, Arsenal have gotten a lot better at football under Mick Arteta and so on. So I am expecting this to be a full-blooded affair with the home side probably winning. But nonetheless, we're going to give a, a good account of ourselves, show, show the world what we're all made of. Thomas Partey, they've opened up some space, but you know who's there? My goalkeeper. Good block. Oh my god, I thought that was a goal. Sanko lays it off beautifully into Jed Wallace. He's got a load of space. But he gets caught up to... Oh, and... Oh, that was a... That was a crap shot, to be honest with you. But we've tested the goalkeeper, at least. It's not looking good for them. Haksabanovic this time. Haksabanovic... Oh, my God. Ramsdale, you freaking crackhead. Oh, and Alexis Vega... Putting on the absolute bonus here. How has he managed to... Oh, no. Lots of space. Too much space. There we go. It's 1-0. It's 1-0. Okay. Well, that's frustrating. 
What? There is no way. Who who is that? Uh, I want to see who that was. Who allowed Thomas Partey? I was like, I'm getting there easily. Look at this. Who is this guy? It's freaking Dan. Dan Ballard is such a freaking cost at times. Penalties. Oh, that's that's annoying. Here we go. Sanko. Oh my god, almost hanging the goalkeeper. Okay, yeah, we actually need to make a few changes as well. It's 60 minutes gone by. I, I normally like to make my changes around there anyway. And as you can see here, this is the attacking formation that I've decided to go with. Obviously, it's a 3-4-2-1. I guess you could call it that. Um, with Sosa dropping into the defense, Kelly inverting a bit more into the midfield as that uh, inverted fullback. And I'm going to bring on Kuto for the likes of Wallace. More pace down that side. And also, Ballard, you have been shocking, mate. But those are the only changes I'm going to make. <laughs> Saka is just like a cheat code. Up against Lloyd Kelly this time, though. And he's beaten him. And he's still... Of course, Arsenal are technically, you know, they win the final of the Champions League last season. One of the best teams in Europe. I can't say I'm mad that we're losing 3-0 to them. But, like, I did expect a bit more from the boys. Matt O'Reilly lays it out. Back post area. I see you. Well, you know what? I'll take it. You know what? Maybe Magic was the one that I should have freaking played. Oh, my God. Kuto. He's got pace on him. Kuto this time. Oh, no. And it's 3-2. You know what? Mm, we could have done it, you know, if I played Magic. Magic's hold a play. It's a thing of beauty. We have one last opportunity here. We have one last moment here. Kuto squares it. Oh my. Okay, we've, we've still got it. we still got it into Matt O'Reilly. Matt O'Reilly plays it on. Who is that? How has he done that? We had an opportunity at the end to draw the game. I must say, after the, the Madja and the Kuto subs, we looked a lot better. You know what? You win some, you lose some. I'm very happy with how the boys performed at the Emirates against a team that literally came second in the Champions League last season. Lost in the final to Bayer Leverkusen. And we came here and we showed ourselves to be a, a very good team. Okay, guys. So we are going to end things off here on deadline day. Bruno Fernandes moving from Manchester United to AC Milan. And Lois Openda moving to Manchester United. Wow. Um, decisive potentially to the likes of PSG and so on and so on and so on. I don't really care. I'm going to skip deadline day. We don't really need to make any other signings. So ending things off right here, right now, of course, just a look at the Prem table. We are sitting eighth. One win, one draw, one loss. All against tough teams. Leeds, shown to be a very good side on their day. Obviously, Arsenal, very good, as well as Spurs. And we drew against one of them and lost to the other, obviously. Um, but Arsenal currently in first place on nine points with Manchester United just in behind. Come on, uh, Nottingham Forest and Newcastle complete the top four with Chelsea breathing down their necks in fifth place. I am very happy with the start of the season. Honestly, I am. Anyway, guys, hit that like button. That'd be fantastic. Subscribe if you are new. That would also be fantastic. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have a damn great day. I'm out.